Hi guys. Come on in. While I sync my devices here. Happy Tuesday. I hope you had a good Easter or Resurrection Sunday or however you celebrate. I hope you were able to spend time with your family. Just Devices here. Got it. All right. Let's turn Happy this down. Tuesday. Okay. All right, guys. Grab your waters. Come into the kitchen. I can't see the comments yet. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Rod. All right, today is gonna be, we have jam packed. We have a lot, my counter has a lot of food on it. So a lot of food, a lot of flavors, a lot of fun. This is actually one of our most requested videos um, about just preparing ingredients. So when I was doing research for this, um, one of the things that they wanted to talk about was either um, different ways to prepare an ingredient or they asked for some ground beef in specifically because it's a dish that they cook often and they kind of have that go-to um, recipe that they go to and they just wanted something different. So today we are going around the world with ground beef. We have a lot of dishes to try. So grab your waters. I'm gonna be asking some questions and stuff. So because this was a pretty hot topic, I want to encourage you guys to like those comments up, ask questions, um, and just put it all in there. If I don't see it, at one point I'm going to try and go back up, and if I don't see it, um, just ask it again. So don't be, if I move on and I haven't answered it, ask it again, because I, you know, I don't have my glasses on, so just make sure that you're asking the questions. Like those comments up. Give me some energy. I'll give you guys some energy back. So ground beef. Let's talk about this first we're going to do our waters and then we're going to go over these i have my hat on today my hands are clean because we're going to um, do some i guess some recipe demo semi recipe demo um <laughs> going and so i have my head covered my hands are clean and we'll go ahead and get started so we come into the kitchen leave everything behind deep breath in out now let's wing it. Lots going on today. So let's let's get to it. All right. The first thing is our water. Our water for today is coconut kiwi. Now what's different with this one is, let me make sure I have my notes because I have a lot to tell you guys today. So I have my notes here. This one is a little different because usually I just use regular water and then I put the, the fruits in and then just let it infuse. But this time it's different. I used coconut water. So I got some coconut water. And girl, all these $1.99. Hi, Rochelle. Hi, Nana. Hi, Emma. The only thing that's in here is coconut water. So that's what's in here. And then I infused it with kiwi. Now, every week I say, oh, this one is my favorite. But this one is my favorite. Like, I made two. Like, that's how good it is. So let's talk about coconut water. Coconut water is known as nature's Gatorade or nature's um, sports drink because of the electrolytes that's in there. So if you're gonna be out in the sun and you're taking water with you, take some coconut water in it. It's gonna help replenish what your body's sweating out. There's a lot of electrolytes in here. It is high in antioxidants, amino acids, and potassium. I remember a while ago, I was on a coconut water kick and I was just down in these puppies, just drinking them. And I had a doctor's appointment, so I went to the doctor. They did their regular stuff. And the doctor is the one person that I don't mind telling, I don't want to see you again for another year. But, like, don't, don't call me type thing. I'll call you. Because when you leave that, you don't want them calling you. Well, my doctor called me. And he was like, I need you to come back in because your potassium levels was a little high. And I was like, really? But then I tracked it back to because I drank like a gallon of coconut water before I went to the doctor. But my doctor is thorough, I love it, but everything checked out. So don't drink coconut water before you go to your doctor. And kiwis, kiwis are high in vitamin C, K, E, and folate. Does anybody know what another name for kiwi is? What is another name for kiwi? While I taste this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, this, oh my gosh, this one is so good. What's another name for kiwi? Do you guys know? Oh, 
Okay, it's Chinese gooseberry. But this kiwi has that slight sweetness. So this is our water for today. I encourage you, give this one a try. Okay, let's talk ground beef. So ground beef, that was one of the topics that came up that people wanted. So, you know, everybody has that go-to dish, the meatloaf or the spaghetti with meat sauce or lasagna. But today I wanted to show you that you can go around the world with ground beef. So not too many tomato-based um, dishes, but a lot of different ones that you probably heard of but didn't really try and they're all easy. Some of them came together in like seven minutes. I was done. So if you do the prep, you can get it done. So ground beef is just ground up um, uh, beef. It's usually like the less tender, so like the chuck or the round that they ground up, they break down those muscle fibers and it's a little bit more um, palatable. So anytime you're cooking ground beef, make sure you cook it to 160 degrees. So let's start with these dishes. We're gonna stay in the US first. We're gonna go up north a little bit and we're gonna do an open face Philly cheese steak sandwich. Yes, now normally this is done with some type of shaved um, steak and then they put it on a flat top and get it all nice and caramelized. You can get that same caramelization at home using a cast iron skillet. Everybody should have one of these. I know everybody's grandma probably had one. They're a little bit intimidating because they're like super heavy. They can double as a blunt object. They say it's hard to clean. They're very easy to care for. Um, once you know, you just have to keep them seasoned. But the caramelization that you get on meat from a cast iron steak, delicious. Yes, question. Hey Rod, what's your question? But always try to keep one of these. They maintain heat very, very well. That's why you fry chicken in this because it, it keeps the oil hot. Yep, what's your question? Cast iron skillet. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna keep going until your question comes through. So. You can use French bread. Normally they use like a hoagie thing. This is not a traditional um, Philly cheesesteak at all. This is just you being creative. How do I know which ground beef pack to pick up? 80, 20, 70, 30. So let's take a look at, at this. So when you see those numbers on your roast beef, your roast beef, your ground beef packages, those two numbers tells you the meat to fat percentage, right? So this was the one that I had that I picked up. And this was 93.7, so it was 93% lean and 7% fat. So the second number is always the amount of fat. So when you see 80-20, it's 80% 80 meat, whatever it is, whether it's a chalk or a round, and then 20% fat. So 70-30, 90-10, the second number is always the amount of fat. So if you're trying to stay heart healthy, um, definitely try and keep the lower second number. This one only had 7% fat, but I mixed another one in there that was 20, but no judgment. So it, it depends on what you're doing. So my chefs always tell me fat equals flavor, and I agree. Have you had a bacon? I mean, hello, hi. Like a ribeye steak, just the fat, just... My mouth is watering. So it depends on what you need. Get some, if you want the lean, 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 keep a lower second number. But 80-20 is, is usually is usually pretty pretty balanced. Open face Philly cheesesteak. So you brown it um, in your pan and then you add your sliced mushrooms, your peppers, and onions. So you can use whatever bread, whatever sandwich bread. I like, you know, I like being creative with food. So I like these. These are open, these are nans. And I love this. It's just like something that's just so easy. You can make flatbread pizzas out of it. So I made an open-faced Philly cheesesteak. So here it's what it looks like. So you see the peppers in there, the onions. Now here's what I would suggest, guys. If you are doing um, a bunch of dishes, let's say you want to, I'm gonna, we're gonna tour the world here and you wanna do a ground beef dish every night, I would suggest you cook a big, pot of ground beef at the beginning of the week whether it's Sunday or Monday just keep the seasonings very basic salt pepper maybe some garlic salt and then when you're making your dishes you can add your seasonings then you can change the season remember last week we talked about manipulating flavors so do a big pot now have you ever been doing ground beef and you're using a fork 
to kind of get the big chunks out. And then when you're done, you have like semi meatballs and meat cubes in your ground beef and it's not consistent. If you want to have consistent ground beef, here's my ground beef that I made, all the same size. If you want to have consistent ground beef every time, this was a trick I learned from my aunt. Hey, Auntie Rita, back in Florida. Here's what you use. A potato masher. And I know it sounds weird, but I have not cooked ground beef without this thing. Once you put it in a pan, you just keep mashing it and it's going to even out those big chunks. Now, if you are cooking something where you don't mind having some mini meatballs within your pasta sauce, that's perfectly fine. But if you want even, get one of these. I lost one of these once and I bent a hanger into the shape and used it and it worked. This will give you consistent ground beef every time. So back to our Philly cheesesteak here. This we just caramelized in a pan with a little bit of Worcestershire. Worcestershire, I'm just kidding. Worcestershire sauce, some onions, some peppers, and some mushrooms. So we're gonna pop this in the oven, but let's put some cheese on it. Now, this is not a classic Philadelphia cheese um, steak because some people put cheese Whiz, some people put provolone. It just depends, but food is fun. So use what you have. I have some smoked provolone. Of course I do, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put this on top of our sandwich here. There you go, guys. And we're going to put this in the oven. So ground beef dish number one, open face Philly cheesesteak sandwiches, or you can just do a regular cheesesteak sandwich. So just because the original recipe uses like sliced steak, you can still use ground beef and get the same flavor profile. So we're going to put this in the oven, but we're going to put another dish in the oven. So any questions about Philly cheesesteak, ground beef style? Yes, Tanya, you use your thing to make refried beans. This thing, I mean, multiple use. Get stuff that multiple uses. Any questions on Philly cheesesteak? I just touched my, my hat, so I'm going to wash my hands real quick. Any questions? No? Okay. Sorry, y'all. That's, that's the chef in me. Sorry. I gotta wash my hands. I'm so, I'm so conscious of it. Okay. All right. So we went up north. Now we're gonna go to our Spanish friends. We're gonna visit our Spanish friends. So Philly cheesesteaks in Philly. Next, we're gonna go to Spain or any uh, Latin island, I guess empanadas so at the beginning of the week when you make your big pot uh your big pot of ground beef you can separate them you remember we had the ziploc bags and you can portion them off and freeze them because they will stay in the freezer up to four months and cooked ground beef like this covered will stay in your refrigerator three to four days so that's your whole week so just portion it and then grab out what you need hi maribel hi miss moyer you just grab out what you need and then you're good to go. So we make Monday, we make our Philly cheesesteak. We're gonna put that in the oven in a second. Tuesday, empanadas. So you take this ground beef out, you season it the way that you would do it. I cut up some carrots, I put a little bit of ketchup, a little bit of sugar in there, um, some diced onions, however you want your filling to be. And here are empanadas. We're gonna bake this live, guys. We're gonna put this in the oven. Now, I know this may seem a little bit intimidating because it's dough, right? But no, no, I'm here to help you moms. It's all semi-homemade. Go and get you these, the little Grand's Biscuits, semi-homemade. Save a lot of time, all the work is done for you. Roll this out, you take your meat filling, stuff it in there, roll that puppy up and you're good to go. So these are empanadas. We're gonna put this in the oven at 350. The package says we're gonna cook according to the package and it's 13 to 17 minutes. So I've brushed three of them with an egg wash and egg wash is just used to um, shine and some people use a milk wash. So does anybody know what's the difference? Yes, they are addicting. What's the difference between using an egg wash and a milk wash? Let's see if you guys know. This one is not brushed, so I just want you to see the difference. So Tuesday, empanadas. We're gonna pop this and our Philly cheesesteak in the oven. Milk wash and egg wash, what's the difference, guys? Do you know? Let's see, Siri's gonna help me. 
Set my timer for 15 minutes. Set my timer for 15 minutes. Your timer is set for 15 minutes. Thank you, Siri. Shine, yes, Holly, you're right. So an egg wash is used for shine and a milk wash is used to encourage browning. So that's the difference. So I'm gonna keep an, I'm gonna keep an eye on the Philly one because that doesn't need 15 minutes. Um, we just want the cheese to melt. So Monday we went to Philly. Tuesday we're gonna go to any Spanish thing. And every culture has some type of meat in a thing, right? In St. Thomas, where I'm from, it's called a, a pate, whether it's a meat pate or a saltfish pate. Jamaica is a Jamaica beef patties. They're called samosas in some of the Asian countries in India. Um, England, they're called the Cornish pasties, I think they're called. So speaking of England, Wednesday, let's go there. So we're gonna go across the pond to England and Ireland, I think is where this came from originally. So Wednesday, milk wash doesn't shine as much. Right, the milk wash is to encourage browning and the egg wash is to encourage shine, yep. So Wednesday, shepherd's pie. So technically, this is a cottage pie, not a shepherd's pie. There is a difference. The difference between the shepherd's pie and a cottage pie is a cottage pie is usually made with beef and a shepherd's pie is usually made with lamb because the shepherds used to use it. So it's stewed meat and vegetables and it's a dish that they, um, hi Isa, hey Anders. Oh, hey guys. Um, it's stewed beef and it was usually like a leftover dish where they would just take the leftovers and make something. Um, so you stew the meat with some vegetables. Guys, I just used a can of Del Monte mixed vegetables, put that in there with a little bit of ketchup and get it to the flavor that you want. You put that down in the bottom of the base and you top it with usually mashed potatoes. So, but of course I had to be a little extra. So I did a mixture of sweet potatoes and regular potatoes because the sweet potatoes is going to bring in another flavor profile, right? It's going to bring in some sweetness and some vitamins and minerals that the regular potato doesn't have. So I'm going to take a piece out of it and show it to you guys. Now you don't need to get potatoes and if that takes so long to boil, you can use ain't nothing wrong with some instant anything. The only two ingredients is here and here is dehydrated potatoes and citric acid for preservation. Two ingredients. This makes a perfectly good mashed potato. So that's what I used for this. So if you have this, you can also make bread from this. You can make potato rolls, potato croissants. So you could get multiple uses out of this. So shepherd's pie usually has that potato, I mean mashed potatoes on top, pop it in the oven. Wednesday, we're across the pond. So let me take a piece out show you guys what it looks like my sister in Virginia makes this she makes a, a really good um, shepherd's pie too and it's just all use what you have on, on hand guys if you don't like beef you can use ground turkey you can use ground pork it's so 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 simple I'll take another piece out show you Oh, and I, I put panko crumbs on top so there's a little crunch because you want different textures it's really nice. All right, let's take a look. All right, here's our shepherd's pie, guys. And this can feed, I'll be, pop, well, no, I'm lying. I won't be full off of this. But just make it for the size of your family. And it's really, really good. The potatoes is, ha is hearty. The sweet potatoes is going to bring in some, another level of sweetness with that savory meat and vegetables. Very practical, very, very easy, very inexpensive. This thing, Aldi's again, hello, hi. If you have not been shopping at Aldi's, I need you to get hip to the game. Aldi's is the business, okay? This box, I think, was like $1.99. I mean, and how many times am I going to use it? A lot. So, shepherd's pie. Yes, you can make bread with instant potato. You can make uh, potato rolls. Uh, maybe I'll do that in one of next week's videos. But... It's a shepherd's pie. Any questions on shepherd's pie? Or any of the dishes that we talked about? I'm gonna check the Philly cheesesteak to see, make sure the cheese is not like burnt. 
It's looking good, guys. Looking good. On that Philly cheesesteak sandwich, um, I put some mayo. Uh, my sister and I had um, a debate, if you would say, who makes the best mayonnaise? Is it? Let, I'm gonna put it to you guys. Who makes the Who makes the best mayo? Is it Hellman's or Duke's? I'm gonna tell you which one I think. Yes, and no worries, guys. I'm gonna put um, the recipes down in the comments after the video is over. Um, but you know, my sister is gonna, I, I can hear her already. Usually when I'm making these, I just eyeball it. Because, okay, because I'm making small portions and I can't, I didn't wanna do the full recipe. My fridge is like bursting because there's a lot of prep that goes into this, which I don't mind, I love cooking. I love doing this for you guys and I love the interaction. Um, but I just eyeballed it, but I'll find a recipe and put it in there for you. But which one is the best? So Rod says Dukes, Issa says Hellman's, Holly says Kraft, Tanya says Kraft. The, uh, hello, thank you Miss Moyer, Dukes, Oscar says Dukes, yes. Mm, mm. Okay, I personally, I personally, hands down, Dukes is the best mayo. I mean, the potato salad, Dukes wins. And here, here's why, here's why. Because it just has more flavor, okay? We know that the ingredients, the higher up it is, that's how much more that is in the product. The second ingredient in Hellman's is water. The second ingredient in, is in Dukes after the oil is egg yolks. And all a man, all mayo is, is oil, egg yolks, a little bit of acid, and some salt, maybe some mustard. So water versus egg yolks. Remember, fat equals flavor, and egg yolks is pure fat. I will take Dukes hands down any day. If you haven't had Dukes, please try it. I you you won't you won't regret it. Hellman's is okay, but if I had a choice, Dukes all day. Boop, boop. Okay, sorry, child. I don't went off on a mayo rant. Okay, so we went to Shepherd's Pie Thursday. Let's go to Asia. All right, guys. So ground beef, very versatile. You make a pot, a big pot, at the beginning of the week. You take it out in your portions. We already went to England. We had some Spanish stuff. And then now, let's go to Asia. So here we have Korean barbecue beef. Well, Korean beef and white rice. Now this one is, this is one of my favorites, guys. So this is very, very easy. This dish came together in like seven minutes. And what it is, is the ground beef, you just take that out and you put it in a teriyaki type glaze. So it's just brown sugar, soy sauce, garlic, and ginger. You put the everything in the pan. You put the brown sugar in the pan with the soy sauce. It melts really, really, really quickly. And then you put in your garlic. You let everything all get together. Throw your meat in. And then at the end, grate that ginger on top. That small ginger is gonna hit that heat and it's just gonna distribute the loveliness. So this has a teriyaki, sweet, um, salty type flavor that is very, very different. I mean, you don't think to do this with ground beef, but I'm sure this is separate, different from any other dish that we've had. Now, if you notice, none of the dishes that we've made have the same flavor profiles, um, and it's made with stuff that you already have. So ground beef, five different ways, five different countries that we're gonna go to. I'm gonna, hold on. Let me give this a little taste here. Yes, I know, I'm sorry, I'm about to eat it in front of y'all, but I wanna get you the flavor profile. Oh my gosh. Okay. So that brown sugar, you get the sweetness from that, and then the saltiness from the soy sauce. You don't need to put a lot of salt in here because the soy sauce is bringing it, but this is really, really good very simple very easy and you'll be eating in like seven minutes so if you like teriyaki kind of like those type of things and you can make a bowl out of this you could put um i'm sure some other condiments and stuff around here but this is is really really good please give this one a try korean beef and white rice and it's topped with some um chives 
Let me check the steak. Okay, it's looking good. I'll give it like another minute or so. Yeah, I'll give it another minute or so. Yes, Holly, you can use um, teriyaki instead of soy. So if you, but if you're gonna use the teriyaki sauce, I wouldn't put the brown sugar. Because teriyaki is soy sauce, brown sugar, ginger, and garlic, and some additional spices. So technically here, you're just making your own teriyaki. But if you have teriyaki sauce that you already like, or you may have in a fridge that you need to use, you can definitely do that. But if you don't, and you want to make um, a Korean rice bowl, you definitely can with those four or five very simple ingredients. Very, very easy. Okay, I am sorry, y'all. Y'all remember last week when I made the bread and I was asking you guys what your favorite bread was and someone said that their, I think it was my sister in Florida, said her favorite bread was the brown bread at the Cheesecake Factory. So I went to the Cheesecake Factory. I'm sorry, I did not go to the Cheesecake Factory because they are closed. I went to the grocery store to get all of this stuff and look what I found in the supermarket, y'all. The Cheesecake Factory brown bread. Can you say, hashtag learning, yes. Can you say I snatched this up so fast and you remember we made butter last week so I'm gonna put some butter on this, put it in the oven with some tea. I'm saying, I did not know that the Cheesecake Factory was doing this so yes their brown bread mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's okay thank you for joining Tisha yes so okay so we done been to Philly we went to our little Spanish islands and stuff with our empanadas that's looking really good we had our shepherd's pie with our sweet and regular potatoes you don't have to do that I just did that you could just put whatever you want on there and then we went we had our Korean beef and rice so I got the bread at um, Kroger's on Broad, right here. All right, let me check my cheesesteak. I think they're done. Where's my, where's my mitten? Where's my... Ooh, y'all. Okay. Here's our open face sandwich. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Looks really good. Let me cut it up. See what we got. Okay, so, and what I like about this is if you make the big pot of ground beef, um, you could just saute all of the vegetables. So if you have someone that doesn't like mushrooms, um, then no need to put um, the mushrooms in there. You can have each person customize it um, for, their, for themselves, which is why I love um, cooking and food because you get to just it's it's fun you get to make it to your own liking to your own um, oh my gosh y'all this is so hot Ooh, hoo, hoo. look at the cheese look at the cheese y'all okay all right I'm not gonna put this big thing in my mouth cuz then I have to talk to y'all and that's not cute but I really do want to taste it because my mouth is like watering but I just want to show you guys. Here's our sandwich, the steam, and Philly cheesesteak, open face. Okay, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. I am going to enjoy this. Okay, I'm sorry. I have to taste just a little bit, just a little piece of it. Yes. I encourage you guys to give that a try. Let me put this to the side because I'm going to keep looking at it and I'm going to want to eat it. Oh, that's so good. Oh, my word. The onions and the peppers are caramelized on that. It's really, oh, man. Yeah, that is good, guys. Please give that one a try. Yeah, see, you don't need steak, just ground beef. The ground beef to the rescue. That one was really good. Okay, next. So, Friday, we are going to... Russia. So what is the dish that you think we're going to make if we're going to Russia? Russia is next. Where we can... Um, the cheese that I used was this. I used provolone. And this is a smoked flavored provolone. 
but if you have mozzarella mozzarella has a great melting quality as well you can try that one too but um i really really like this that came that came out really good okay there's our timer for our um empanadas so let me just check them and see where they're at They could go for maybe three more minutes. So I'm uh, just by looking at them, I'm going to let them go for about three more minutes. Am I taking orders? <laughs> sure. Okay, so let's see if we have any guesses. Goulash was a guess. Okay, thank you, Holly. I might, yes. Smoke provolone. Yes, Miss Moyer, you are killing it today. Beef stroganoff yes so here we are guys now usually this is our beef stroganoff i love this dish because it's so simple to do here we have some noodles it's usually done on buttered noodles but all i had was spaghetti so use spaghetti if all you have is penne use pen penne if all you have is rice use rice that's the thing about food it's very interchangeable. So here's our beef stroganoff. Again, just take our ground beef from earlier in the week. This one, um, we thicken the sauce with a roux. So does anybody know what a roux is? What is a roux? It's used a lot in Louisiana cooking. Um, and the purpose of it, well, I'm not gonna give the answer away. So does anybody know what a roux is? while I clear this out. For our beef stroganoff, this is a Russian dish. Um, <clears throat> very creamy, not the healthiest, and I'll tell you why, but does anybody know what a roux is? Yes, good job, Keisha. Well, it's not, a roux technically is, yes, Rod, flour and oil, so it's flour and a fat, right? That's what the roux is, and that's the main difference between um, Creole and Cajun cooking so they're both Louisiana styles but the difference is um, the ingredients that were used so the Cajuns really used like they were more um, of the poorer thing so they used what they had so with their flour they would use oil and then the Creole was a little bit they were the educated the upper class they could afford more of the expensive ingredients so they would use flour and butter because butter was more expensive and the Cajuns they used oil they used what they had but usually a roux is equal parts flour and a fat and oil now you can thicken with flour and milk yes you Christy you can thicken with flour and water um, you can use um, cornstarch you can use arrowroot um, just but the basis is always flour and some type of fat and or liquid so we start with that with this and then we pour in some chicken stock to make a sauce. And one of the mother sauces, a velouté, I think it is. No, a bechamel starts with a roux. And that one has milk. So we, the thing that makes this creamy is sour cream. And don't worry, guys. I'm going to put the recipes um, and everything in there. So beef stroganoff. We got our mushrooms in here, our diced onions. And you can get a nice, great meal. Eat this with a side of Texas Toast garlic bread. I'm saying, you're good to go. So we went all across the world today, ground beef, five ways, and I actually threw in two other things. Let me check our empanadas. All right, one more minute, and then I'm gonna take it out. So one of the other dishes that we can do, I'm gonna go back up and see, did, did I miss anyone's questions before I move on? Did I miss any questions? I'm gonna try and scroll through. Any questions on our dishes that we did, our empanadas, our Philly cheesesteak, our Korean beef and rice, our shepherd's, well, cottage pie, our beef stroganoff, I mean, our other dishes, where it is good. You need know, lasagna, the meatloaf. Um, I would encourage you, if you make those dishes, to kind of spice it up a bit. So if you're doing a meatloaf, wrap it in bacon, or do a, um, a buffalo meatloaf, where you put some buffalo sauce with some blue cheese crumbles on top. 
Um, if you're gonna do lasagna, um, there is a Puerto Rican dish where they do a ground beef similar to lasagna, but instead of noodles, it's um, plantains. So they slice the plantain, so it's a plantain lasagna type thing. It's so good, the sweetness of the lasagna against the saltiness of the meat. That's good. So there's nothing wrong with making those kind of go-to dishes, but you know, be creative, spice it up a little bit. Why did you use a chicken stock with a beef recipe? Okay, so you can use any type of um, stock that you have. Hold, let me take the empanadas out, hold on. All right. <laughs> Guys, look at these. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So these are the three that had the egg wash and this one didn't. I don't know if you can see the difference in the shine on them but perfectly golden brown. They are good to go. Oh, yeah, that's nice and warm. But here is another simple dish. You can serve this with a side of maybe like some sour cream and just dip it in. I, I am not giving you healthy. I actually do have a healthy option here for you. But empanadas, guys, easy. We're gonna let it cool and then I'll break one open so you can see um, what the inside looks like. But let me put it here so I don't burn myself. but the true markings of a chef. If a chef has knife things or burns right here, cause we always, when we're like reaching for stuff, if you see a chef and he has the battle scars, you know that they're, they're, a good, they're a good cook. Beef stock versus chicken stock. So you're right. Um, typically you wanna kind of marry it. So like when we made our chicken soup, um, last week I used chicken stock, but if all you have is uh, beef and it's not necessarily matching the meat that you have it's okay it's just gonna add a different um, flavor profile um, chicken stock is a little bit milder you don't really taste the stock because there's the sour cream in there the sour cream is what you kind of like really taste but if you use chicken and chicken it'll just give you a higher um, chicken profile in your dish so it's okay I mean I've seen some dishes that had both seafood and poultry in it but um, if you can marry the flavors, marry the flavors, but um, if all you have is chicken and you're cooking beef, it's, it, it's all right. Um, the recipe for the dough, uh, sure, it's right here. Good old biscuits grands, them grands. No need to make it from scratch. Uh, they already did it for you. Yes. Let me see. Okay, so I'm gonna um, open that up in a minute. Any questions? Let me get a sip of my coconut kiwi. So good. Okay, now um, if you're on a low carb, another dish that you can make is stuffed zucchini. Guys, look at this zucchini. Look, is this not the prettiest thing? What is going on? Am I the only one that gets excited? Like last week I showed you guys a, a pepper, a marbled pepper. I saw this and I was like, I'm getting that for my zucchini boats. It is so cute. So what you do, you cut this in half and you scoop it out. If you have one of these or just a spoon, just scoop out the meat. I actually cook the meat, um, the meat from in here with the ground beef. And you can make zucchini boats. Um, let me hold one up. So there you guys go. You just stuff it with your meat filling. I put a little bit of cheese on top. I chopped up the meat that I scooped out from here, put it in here. So low carb way, if you're watching your carbs and you're not really trying to eat too much uh, rice or pasta or potatoes, if you're kind of staying away from that, or non bread, because we have a lot of um, pastas here, right? A lot of starch carbs. You can make um, zucchini boats. So just cut it in half and then stuff them and just go to town. Ooh, that could have been, ooh, that could have been wrong. That could have been wrong, y'all, that could have been wrong. And then I also stuff some mushrooms. So you can be very, very creative with ground beef. There's no, um, <clears throat> you can, yeah. Look, I mean, look at all of the dishes that we made today and there's so much more. So we made this shepherd's pie, right? And. At the beginning of this, I asked, yes, <laughs> hashtag keto. At the beginning of the, um, the show, I asked, what was the state um, dish of Texas? Or at least I think I did. 
the steak dish. I think I did. And it's chili. So there's another dish that you can make. Um, it's like a cornbread casserole. It's the same thing as this. You put chili on top. And then you get some good old Jiffy pop cornbread mix and put that on top, y'all. And you got cornbread on top of chili. You could put some cheese in there. Simple, easy, done. Another thing that you can do is when you make your big pot of ground beef, get you some good old taco seasoning and have a big thing of taco meat. <laughs> I said taco meat. That's usually how I describe a man's chest hair is taco meat. But okay, all right. So you have your big thing of taco meat and then just have a nacho taco frito pie night. Have your salsa, your pico de gallo, your sour cream, your guacamole, and then just have a whole bunch of chips. You can bring, you can make some tostadas with the taco meat. So have a bowl of this and you can make have some nacho chips you can have some taco shells and if you're gonna make nachos yo don't use regular nacho chips some good old doritos have you ever had nachos made with doritos i'm saying that's a whole other level so have a mexican night just have your thing all your accompaniments a bunch of chips get some frito scoops the corn chips those are good and just let everybody make what they want make their own um dish so have a nacho night make some margaritas i'm just saying have a good old time there are tons and tons of things that you can do with ground beef i hope what i presented to you today was helpful i hope it gave you some ideas i'm gonna cut this empanada first let me see if i missed some questions hi franklin um, you bake them. What was, what was that asking? If I bake the zucchini boats? Yes. Um, you put the zucchini boats or the mushrooms, um, in the oven at 350 until they are fork tender. Did you put anything on the veg you stuff? Yes. So on the thing, after you cut it out and you scoop out all the meat, um, some olive oil or some grapeseed oil, um, salt and pepper, and then you stuff it with your stuffing. In the oven 350 until tender hey Frank hey what's up Wildcats come through shout out to all the Wildcats that are watching from BCU back in Florida yes shout out to you the marching Wildcats the all of them what is going on thank you for joining thank you for supporting wait you had me a jiffy cut yes girl yes mm -hmm. yeah just get this right here and then make you some chili and then put this on top of that. And I'm telling you, that is delicious. Delicioso. So Jiffy, and this is like 49 cents. All these, don't be sleeping on all these, y'all. You could shop for a week at all these for $25. No joke. Yes. See if I missed any other questions. <laughs> yes, Rod, you and your taco meat. Todd is listening. Hey, Todd. All right. Any other questions? Let's cut these um, empanadas open. Let's see what they look like. Okay, guys. Remember, these was um, our empanadas that we that we made with pre-made biscuit dough. So if you want to make it from scratch, if you have the time, please go ahead and do so. But if you're trying to save some time and pre-made biscuit dough. It's already done for you. No need to do that. So let's cut this open. Let's see what it looks like. It's a little bit, it's room temperature now. So let me show you the difference. So this one was brushed with egg whites, with egg, an egg wash, and then this one wasn't. Can you see the difference? This one is shiny, and this one is, uh, I mean, they're still golden brown, but this one looks more edible to the eyes. We eat with our eyes first. So let's go ahead and cut, this is break this, ooh, y'all look at this look at mm-hmm mm -hmm. yes yes y'all empanadas mm-hmm oh my god oh my mm -hmm. yes mm-hmm 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 Mary Bell, yes. Stuffed pepper.
first. It was going to be a dish that I was going to make, but y'all, I would have had 30 dishes on here. And my fridge is already like, girl, you tripping. So stuffed peppers is another one that you can make with ground beef, ground turkey, ground pork. Um, whatever way you want to prepare the stuffing, make it ahead of time. I know some people put rice um, in theirs. And then you just cut the top of the pepper off. Um, a way to hack, because if you put it in, it like wobbly. If you take a piece of foil and you roll it up and make like a little um, like a little round circle, a ring, you put the pepper in it and then it won't fall over in the oven. So stuffed peppers are another easy way that you can use ground beef. Another way that you can make ground beef, because there are tons of dishes, guys, and you don't have to make the same dish. You, I'm sure you could go two or three weeks and not prepare the same dish twice. Yes, he is. And o Orlando is on a call. He's in a he's on he's in a meeting. But so here, good old some sloppy Joe, classic ground beef dish, right? With some potato rolls, split top potato rolls, manwich, go to town. Aldi, ninety nine cents. Hello. So, but you can make potato rolls with this. Remember. Yes. So tons and tons of dishes. What other ground beef dish do you make? What is your go-to thing? And would you try any of these that we talked about today? We went um, quite around the world today and they're all delicious, guys. They're all simple. If you make the ground beef ahead of time and you pre-portion it for the week, some of these dishes, that Korean beef came together in seven minutes, less than 10 minutes, you can have dinner on the table. The shepherd's pie, this is instant mashed potato, guys, so you don't have to boil the potato and then peel it and then mash it. You're eating in like, the time it takes water to boil, really. So you can really use ground beef to get dinner on the table fast. It's fairly cheap and um, I hope I inspired you and gave, me, gave you some ideas today. Stephanie, what what is Rotel? Is is that the um the salsa? Is that the salsa brand? Wait, can we do a drive by? We don't live too far. <laughs> yes, taco salad with Doritos. I'm telling, use Doritos. That it just brings a whole other level of flavor along with MSG to the party. But that's okay. Everything in moderation. Want to make the chili with the jiffy? Yes, it's called a cornbread casserole. I think. I'm, I'm gonna find the recipe and put it down there for you, but that, I've had that before, also very good. Thank you, Rod, I'm glad you guys um, like these ideas. Any other questions before we share some information? Oh yes, yes, Tanya, please try these empanadas. Y'all, this is so good. I'm, it's really taking everything in me, not to just scarf this thing down in front of y'all, but I'ma act like my mama raised me with some type of, of manners. So I'm gonna, this and that Philly cheese nan thing, oh yeah, yeah, as soon, as soon as this live is over, I'ma be, I'ma be going to town with it, yes. Yes, that's what I thought it was. The, the Rotel, um, it's either like peppers or like salsa, right? Yeah, that's really, really good. Yes. Okay, any, Questions before we share information. Shout out to the Wildcats coming through, y'all. All right, let me make sure I told you guys everything. Yeah, I did. Okay, so we, we went around the world today. All right. Okay, guys, Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna try the Philly cheese and if I'm not tonight, yes, ma'am, yes. And if you do, come back to the comments and let me know if you guys try it. Please. Did anybody make their own butter or make their own anything from the last week's DI, the DIY? Let me know how, how that turned out. Yes. Hey, Wildcats. Let's go. Dun, 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 dun. Wildcat. Okay. I'm sorry. All right. Any other questions before we share information? Okay, we're gonna share some information real quick. Today is April 14th. Tomorrow is or was tax day. So just a reminder that if you have not filed your taxes, the deadline to file and pay if you owe was extended to July 15th. 
And um, for the stimulus checks, if you have not filed, this is what I understand from the accountant. If you have not filed um, and for the stimulus checks, they're gonna use your 2018, and it's supposed to be automatic. There's nothing that you need to do, which is kind of scary when you think about it. But I know some people that already got their checks already. So I just got a jar to make my own butter. Yes, please let me know. And let me know if, if you do a flavored ones or anything. Keisha, you, you made the pancakes? Nice. Um, I just want to encourage you during this time to check on your friends, check on your neighbors. Um, there is a lot. This is a just a time of just, there's a lot of people that's kind of going through this Um in silence so if you um, have a neighbor or a friend that you kind of haven't heard from in a while or um, just just check up on them text them see how they're see how they're doing I was telling um, a friend of mine that this quarantine it's different it's a different experience being in a house with your husband or your kids versus being um, by yourself it's a different type of isolation so check on your friends check on um, your neighbors make sure that they're doing okay and then for the people who are homeschooling, Legends of Learning is given a, is doing free math and science games. Um, so you can um, assign the science game. So it's a learning thing and you can track their progress um, through it. But they learn through playing games for math and science. And that's Legends of Learning. So I'm going to put that link in the description along with the recipes. I eyeballed most of these. Um, but I'm going to put that in the description and the sister who I was arguing with about the mayonnaise, uh, Duke's one hands down. So yes, if you have not tried Duke's, try Duke's, uh, egg versus water. I mean, there's no, there's really no competition there. So yes, man, which is tacos, stuff, zucchini boats. I hope that I gave you some ideas. Um, I hope that you try it. If you do, let me know. Um, I had a lot of fun preparing this one. Guys, we are right over um, the hump. Um, so we're more than halfway through the Winging It with Chef Toya series. Um, this was all sponsored by my bakery, um, The Salted Crust. It's here in Mansfield, Texas, and we do customized um, desserts. And um, we are a small business and we're feeling it just like every you know every everybody else but i wanted to do something during this time to cheer people up just give them something to look forward to and give back and i've been having a whole lot of fun i'm a little sad that we only have three more um sessions left but we'll see if it's something that goes pretty good maybe i'll change it to once a month but we'll we'll do it but i have enough food here to last me for the for the rest of the week yes I don't need to go grocery shopping. So, any questions before we sign off? I ain't never heard of them, so... Y'all, get, get on the Dukes, man. Any other questions? For those who shared the video, thank you for sharing. If you did a watch party, Rod, thank you. Um, and I will see you guys on Thursday. Thank you guys. Have a good day and we'll see you on Thursday. Bye.